My words to you today are supposed to be on the subject of justice in our households. But before I get to this point, inshallah ta'ala, I can't really, I cannot start with this subject without bringing one of the greatest injustices we're seeing today as we are here on the stage, subhanallah. I was just kind of like checking the news and watching some of the breaking news that's coming out from Jerusalem, from Palestine. Our brothers and sisters are what they're going through day and night for the past years, not just even months. And unfortunately, we're unable to bring justice to them. The oppression that is happening around Jerusalem today, what the brothers and sisters are suffering right now to defending the holy sites of al Masjid al-Aqsa, and no one bringing justice to them. So I'm asking each and every one of you today to exercise your right to bring justice to the people of Palestine and in Jerusalem and speak to your officials. Talk to them. Communicate with your state representatives. Make sure to let them know that you're not happy about what's going on there and that you would like to support the people over there and making sure that our policy over here is for justice for all, not just for one side of that story. And that's something that it's upon us as Muslims to convey the message of justice as we all work on building a society that is all filled with justice, inshallah wa ta'ala. May Allah make it easy for our brothers and sisters in Palestine, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Please make sure to take this as an action item for you before you leave this convention, inshallah wa ta'ala. Now, we also heard about justice that we need to establish for our brothers and sisters, the converts in our communities, as well as overall in American society as well too. I believe that you can't get to this big picture of justice in the society before you start from home. Because if your home, if your home condition is weak, how can you build anything on top of that? If your foundation is weak, how are you going to be able to build a society that's based on justice when you individually cannot even have that in your own personal household? That's a serious matter, Jamal. So if I ask right now, with a show of hand, how many of you can claim that they have, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, established the balance of justice at home with their spouse, with their children, with their parents, with everybody. Raise your hand if you can claim that. And I need to see you guys. MashaAllah, not even actually, you know, 0.09%. Which is true, because we're humans. Humans make mistakes. Humans are biased. We have our own interests, our ego. We always look for what? For feeling comfortable. That whole, you know, kind of inherent you know, desire to feel, find peace and tranquility and comfort makes us selfish sometimes. Even if it was on the account of other people who are beloved to us, a spouse, a child, a parent, a friend, a neighbor, anybody. You love them, but you still can be unfair to them. Why? Because you're looking for comfort sometimes. Sometimes love can be brutal, let alone hate a jama'ah. So that's why we need to worry about this and make sure that we establish justice very well at home, at home insha'Allah wa ta'ala. Why establishing justice at home is very important? Because Allah Azza wa Jal, He established this whole world based on that balance. Everything needs to be even and balanced. As He said subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal said, He's the one who arsala rusulahu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala arsala rusulahu wa anzala ma'ahum mizan. He sent the messengers and He sent with them the scale of balance in everything. So that people can establish this sense of balance and sense of justice. And that is, of course, because it's so important. It is extremely, extremely important. You can't have that unless that peace and tranquility, unless you, you cannot get that even balance in your life and your society. But where can we find that in our homes? To understand what justice is, in the Arabic language, the word for justice is what? Anyone knows? What's the word for justice in Arabic, Jama'a? Adil. Right? It's Adil. Where is it coming from? It's coming from a cultural practice in the Arab uh, uh, culture back then. When they used to travel, on the back of the camel, they carried their loads. Imagine if you have one big bag of stuff and you put it on the, in the, the side of the camel, one side of the camel, or the horse or the donkey, whatever that is. How do you think this animal is going to be able to walk? How is it going to be able to go through that, that journey? It's like an impossible mission. It wouldn't survive very much. Why? Because they're leaning towards one side. 
Therefore, al-adil, they say, is when you have two baskets, this two, these two baskets are balanced on the side of the camel. Each one of them is called adil. That's where adil is coming from. You having two baskets on both sides even to balance the weight. So that's just the literal meaning of the word adil. But in the technical meaning of adil, the ulama, they say, it's very simple. It's when you take what people owe you and you give them what you owe them. Is there anything wrong with that? Absolutely not. There's nothing wrong with you asking for what is rightful to you. By what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made rightful to you, why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prescribed for you as a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and what by the law is considered yours. There's nothing wrong with that. But it becomes injustice if you transgress against that. So adil is okay. Now let's establish adil in our household. The first thing I want to bring to our attention is the adil that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to establish with our spouses, your husband, your wife, and so on. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in the final in the final Hajj, or actually the only Hajj he did when he was a Prophet in Medina, from Medina. When he was standing on the member of Arafah, and as he was reminding the people with their final duties towards one another, if you, re if you listen to that khutbah, as we know what khutbah to wada the farewell khutbah of the Prophet what was it all about? It was truly all about establishing the balance and justice in all aspects of our life. Everything including our social life. So he was reminding men to be dutiful to, the, to their wives. bin nisa I advise you in regards to, your, to the treatment of your women. Very clear. Because you have taken them into your household by the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the vows you exchanged when you got married. Use the name of Allah for this. So don't breach that. And then, he said that to make sure that you treat them well in your household. And the same thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding the ladies as well to be fair and just to their spouses. Allah subhanahu wa reminding men saying, وَعَاشِرُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Treat them well. He said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَهُنَّ مِثْلُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ You owe them rights equal to the obligations they owe you towards you. Like even he's asking women to take care of their husbands and the men to take care of their wives. He said, وَلِلْرِجَالِ عَلَيْهِنَّ دَرَجَةً but because of the, the nature of our household and the arrangement of our household, men might have maybe a, a, a degree different. Because it's responsibility comes, of course, with some sort of authority and privilege as well, too. But there has to be some even balance over here. When it comes to the subject of children, the very famous hadith of Nu'man ibn Bashir, radiallahu ta'ala anhu arda. One day, the mother, the father of Nu'man, he favored his oldest son. He favored his oldest son. And he went to him and he said, look, this is for you. So the mother, when she saw that, she got upset. Like, how come you give him, he, the only one he gets that, and his other siblings don't get anything? That's not fair. There's no justice here. By the way, it sounds familiar in many, many households. Especially if it was boys versus girls. The oldest versus the youngest. There are many ways where parents, unfortunately, being unfair and unjust to their own children. So the mother, she objected to that. She goes, no, 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 that's not right. Go and ask the Prophet ﷺ about this. So Nu'man, he goes and he went to the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Rasulullah, I've given my son and my man something, you know, I, just because he, he deserves it. He deserves it. So the Prophet says, Have you given all your other children the same? Like, have you been fair to everybody by giving them something? He said, No, just him. So the Prophet told him then, Go and find somebody else to be witness for this because I cannot accept injustice. I'm not going to be a witness for such injustice. So the Prophet Sallallahu made it very clear that as a parent, when you try to be nice to your children, you might cross the line to injustice. Yeah, but they're all my kids. They all love them, you know, equally. Uh, I don't know about that. But true, you still need, with your love for them, you have to establish a scale of justice with all of them. Okay, wait a second. Somebody might say, does it mean if I give this son of mine a car, I have to give my younger daughter, who is maybe five years old, another car? No, we're not saying that. We're saying to be even. So if you give someone something special, give everybody else something special that is equivalent in terms of their favor, what they favor, for instance. So someone who's five years old is not like someone who's 20 years old, for example. You give them something for their age, appropriate to their age, you'll be satisfied. But the whole concept is the principle of fairness and justice that we need to observe 
in our personal life with our children. And my dear brothers and sisters, one of the greatest injustices we, we unfortunately do in our household is that discrimination we do to our children based on what? Whatever that is. Sometimes gender, boys versus girls. Sometimes because, you know, he's obedient, she's not. She's, a, you know, she's good to me, she's not. Sometimes, unfortunately, in the same household, the color of her skin makes a big difference in that kind of favoritism. What an ugly way to discriminate between your own children, between human beings altogether. But still, some people, they do that. And this is awful. It's not from the Quran. It's not from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's had nothing to do with our deen as Muslims. But people find ways to discriminate against their own children, unfortunately. My dear brothers and sisters, be careful. That injustice is so scary. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala he says in the, in the, in the hadith Qudusi that inni harramtu dhulma ala nafsihi wa ja'altuhu baynakum muharrama that I have made injustice to be, be forbidden for me. I would never accept injustice, Allah says. And I made it muharrama between you. I made it also prohibited for you that you treat each other with such injustice. Fala tadalamu. Never ever treat each other with such injustice. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Prophet says, he said that, فَإِنَّ الظُّلْمَ ظُلُمَاتٌ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Beware of injustice. Because injustice will create ظُلُمَاتٌ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ You'll go into darkness on the day of judgment. When we need the glimpse of light to show us the way to Jannah. All of us. But that light, you cannot find it over there. You can have to light it from here. You have to do it right over here so you can have that torch, inshallah ta'ala, shining for you on that day. My dear brothers and sisters, Part of also being fair and just is also with our servants, subhanAllah. You know what? If Allah, alhamdulillah, blessed you so much that you, you're hiring, you know, people to help. You're hiring help right now for your children, for the household, whatever that is. Be fair. Just because you pay money doesn't mean to torture them. Just because it's their job to clean the house doesn't mean to throw the trash on the floor. Like literally, I had somebody actually complain to me about this. While the lady was cleaning the floor, you know, the, the kids, they come and they throw stuff, you know, on the floor while she's sweeping. I'm like, really? Is, is that what it is? Are we so lazy to this level that we throw the trash right on the floor while she's sweeping because she's going to pick it up anyway? Why not just take it with your own hand to the trash can? Why can't you just make it easy for her? In the story of Abu Dhar, وارضاه, we know the story of Abu Dhar when he was unfair to Bilal one day. Abu Dhar, just to give the back story over here, Abu Dhar, one of the first and the early people who embraced Islam. Very early in Islam, and when the Prophet was still in Mecca under oppression. But when he embraced Islam, he came from a far away land called Ghafar. And then, as he was excited to become Muslim, he, he professed his Islam in Mecca, and he was beaten for it, almost killed for that. Abu Bakr Sadiq has to rescue him from the people. He says, don't you know this man from Ghafar? Your, tri your, your trade road goes through his, their territory. They're going to kill you. They're going to destroy your, your trade if you do that to him. So they left him. Then the Prophet told Abu Dhar, look, go home and wait there. When you hear us, alhamdulillah, become you know, victorious, come join us. So Abu Dhar did not grow up in Medina with the Prophet وسلم, early years of Medina. He didn't grow up in Mecca, so he wasn't really polished very well. So by the time he came to Medina, was already advanced in that society. The Sahaba, whoever the Prophet وسلم, they work with him, they establish their brotherhood and sisterhood. All these differences were gone almost. So Abu Dhar had that encounter with Bilal. And unfortunately, because he wasn't very well polished, he said to Bilal ibn Sauda, you and your black mother. Said that bad word for him. Bilal was, his heart was broken. Like, wow, I've been Muslim all these. I never heard that before from anybody. Why is this brother telling me this? So the Bilal went to complain to the Prophet Sallallahu The Prophet was so angry. Like, how dare you say this to my friend? One of my first loyal people to become Muslim, SubhanAllah. So he called Abu Dhar and he just kind of like looked at him. He goes, Ya Abu Dhar, really? Wow. He says, really? Inna kamri'un fika jahiliya. You're a man of still full of a lot of uh, jahiliya, ignorance. Like, these are acts of ignorance. Ignorant people do these, these things. Ignorant people make these lines, lines to differentiate between people. To this, Abu Dhar, he was broken heart himself. So he goes to the masjid of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he puts his, his cheek on the floor and he lies on his side and when the people passing by him, what's going on? What's wrong with you? He goes, I'm not going to move my face from the ground until Bilal comes to step on my, on my cheek. 
I want Bilal to come and step on my cheek just to, to say I'm sorry to him. So the people went to Bilal, yeah, Bilal, the guy is, is uh, he's in the masjid doing such and such. So Bilal, he comes to him, he's just kind of like, get up, my brother, just get up, get up. It's okay. SubhanAllah, he find in his heart, you know, so much love and forgiveness to allow him just to set him free with that. Abu Dhar, as a result, he was never seen in any condition to be so much, to showing any kind of injustice or unfairness to anybody. So when he, was, when he used to hire slave, actually servants or even actually have slaves at the time, he would dress them up like he does. And they eat with him on the same table with the same food that they cooked for him. So one day he was actually traveling and somebody saw, saw, saw him walking with his servant who was wearing exactly like he was. And he asked him, he goes, uh, um, is that your son? He goes, no, that's my servant. He goes, really? Like, how come he dressed up like you? He says, that's what the Prophet Sallallahu advised me to do. He said, when he cooks your food, make him first taste it. Let him, let him eat with you. He should be eating with you, not you know, just on the side or whatever left over. Because he had to deal with the heat and the fire and, and the sweat while he was making that food for you. So therefore, he said, therefore, I would always treat them like they're my own children. That is a level of justice that he learned from such an encounter, radiallahu ta'ala anhu arda. So when it comes to justice in the household, it's with your spouse, with your children, with your servants, with your parents. With your parents is above everything. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever he speaks about worshiping him, he speaks about himself first, and then he talks to, to us about our parents all the time. Now, here's a moment that is very important for us. We understand the value of taking care of our parents and being durable to our parents. I'm not going to go into this. But one thing that is very important for us is that when people say, I want to be fair to my spouse at the same time, my mom and my, my, you know, my, my, mom and my, my wife, and there are a lot of struggle happening over here. If you take sides, everybody loses. You need to make sure that to love each in a way that is meaningful to them. We think that, you know, if you love your wife too much, it's going to upset your mom. And if your mom gets upset, then you go to hell. And some people say, like, if you upset your wife, you know, to, to please your mom, obviously, you're still going to go to hell anyway. But in dunya probably, before Akhirah. Right? So what do I do in this situation? What am I not going to do here? Again, we need to establish matters based on justice. Meaning, I love my mom, the mom needs to be loved. And I love my wife, the wife needs to be loved. If you try to make that love equal, everybody loses. It's not. But it's even. It's even. So if I'm doing to my wife what a wife deserves from me, even if that upsets my mom, you know what? It's okay. Let her get upset a little bit. I'll go and please her later, inshallah ta'ala. And if I'm doing what I'm supposed to do to my mom, that makes maybe my wife get upset a little bit, you know what? If it was unfair, then yeah, she deserves to be upset. But I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not taking from my wife anything. I'm doing to my mom what, what I owe my mom in that moment. Then it's okay for her to be upset. It's all about being fair over here. Which brings it to the last point, inshallah, as we speak about justice, Adil, people think that it's all about, you know, having that scale to be perfectly 100% or maybe 50-50 in everything in our life. Look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us in the Quran by saying, Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan. Allah azza wa commands you to establish justice and ihsan. Ihsan means excellence, perfection over here. So what does that mean? That means there is something better than justice. Like, wow, I thought you told me earlier that justice is all, this whole universe is about justice. True. But there is something better than justice when it comes to interpersonal relationships. What is it called? It's called ihsan, excellence. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that to us. In ayah, in Surah, in surah Al-Baqarah, when Allah was speaking about uh, in the context of divorce, in the context of divorce, he says, وَإِن طَلَّقْتُمُهُنَّ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَمَنْ تَمَسُونَ And if you divorce them, before you have consummated the marriage with them, he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَنِصْفُ مَا فَرَضْ And you have already assigned a farida for them, which means mahar was already established between you. He says, فَنِصْفُ مَا فَرَضْتُمْ You owe them half of that. What does that mean? If a husband, wife, if a man and woman, for example, came into a marriage contract, they had the nikah, they had the kitab done, but they were waiting for the wedding time. That wedding never happened. They broke up. But they owe the husband and wife because of the nikah and Katbil Kitab. They've never consummated the marriage. 
Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to split the mahar. 50-50. What do we call this? Justice. Right? On both sides, even now. That's supposed to be justice. He goes, قَالَ فَنِصُّ مَا فَرَدْتُمْ إِلَّا Unless, أَنْ يَعْفُونَ They forgive you. Which means they say, we don't need anything, we'll give it back to you. أَوْ يَعْفُوَ الَّذِي بِيَدِي عُقْلَةُ النِّكَاحِ Or the man forgives and he says, you know what? Bismillah, keep everything in your hand. I don't need to take anything back. And Allah said, وَأَنْ تَعْفُوا أَقْرَبُ لِلتَّقْوَى And if you forgive, it brings you closer to righteousness and piety. And then he says, وَلَا تَنْسَوا الْفَضْلَ بَيْنَكُمْ Don't forget about al-fadl, which means grace, to establish between you. In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us a different principle, a higher principle than justice. What is that called? It's called fadl and afu. Fadl, or in this case, the, to be gracious and show grace in this situation is when you give people more than what you owe them. Like you owe somebody $100, you give them $100 and a, and a chocolate. Did you owe them that chocolate back? No. But that's being gracious right now. I want to show gratitude to helping me out. And then we have right now, we have what we call al-afu. Al-afu, or forgiving right now, is when you, when you forgive people all or some of what they owe you. Someone owes you a thousand dollars, you tell them, you know what, just give me whatever you have in your hand and the rest of it is yours. So they give you 900 and the 100 is just forgiven. Subhanallah, that's called afu. Here's what Allah subhanahu is asking for us. He is, yes, commanding us to establish justice, but he's recommending for us to establish ihsan. He commands us to establish justice, but he recommends for us to pursue ihsan, which means to forgive and to be gracious. Many households always try to establish their life on justice, but here's the problem with justice. There's another word in the Arabic language called adl, the word is adl, and if for the inexperienced ear, it sounds exactly like adl. So we have adl and adl. They sound exactly the same. Adl is justice. Adl is completely the opposite. It's injustice. How interesting is that? Which was mentioned in the Quran multiple times in Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Al-Nisa in the context of divorce as well too. If you have divorced your wives and they reach their, their, the end of their term, just the period, he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَلَا تَعْضُلُهُنْ do not, do not abuse them. Do not be unfair to them. In many different ways. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us that we need to always, always try to find a way to create peace in that society, in, the, in, that, in that household. So, adil and adil, while people try to establish justice for themselves, they might cross so many lines and end up in the path of injustice. So be careful as you pursue adil, you might cross the lines to injustice. And injustice is extremely, extremely dangerous. So what is best for us? Those houses that would like to find peace and tranquility, they might not find it in justice, really. They will find it in ihsan. Most of houses that have peace and tranquility that are based on fadl, which means, again, ihsan and graciousness, not just adil. So if you would like to have that peace and tranquility at home, as you pursue justice, which is absolutely your haq to do that, I want you to upgrade yourself and shot to the next level. Seek forgiveness and try to be gracious. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you peace and tranquility at home. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.